fellow Ghanaians, I bring you warm greetings from Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. As we celebrate Easter, marking the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Easter is the most significant celebration for Christians. The extraordinary sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary by dying for us and his resurrection from the grave have given us victory over sin and death. The season is a good opportunity to reflect on that sacrifice and the hope it brings us. Indeed, over the last two years, the sacrifices that our nation and the Ghanaian people have had to bear are beginning to pay off and are putting our nation on the right path. This year, our country is projected to have the fastest growing economy in the world and we are the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. All our young children are now guaranteed a minimum of senior high school education. We have an abundance of food, and for the first time in a long while, we're exporting food to our neighbors. Import duties and utility tariffs have been reduced to bring relief to businesses and individuals and thousands and thousands of graduate teachers and nurses who prior to my coming into office had been sitting at home twiddling their thumbs have been employed. We put 100,000 graduates to work under NAPCO and hundreds of thousands of young men and women are gainfully employed under the various modules of the Youth Employment Agency. The tech giant, Google, has established its first African artificial intelligence lab in Ghana. Other global industrial giants are getting ready to make important investments in our country. We're making steady progress in the implementation of our one district, one factory policy. These and many more continue to be the benefits we're reaping from two years of prudence, discipline, hard work, and sacrifice, benefits that have to be extended to all sectors of our society. That is our challenge. As we celebrate Easter, let us drive carefully on our roads and keep our nation in our prayers. There are many more hurdles ahead to overcome if we are to fulfill the dreams and aspirations of our forebears who envisaged our nation to be that shining star of Africa where the personal security of each citizen is guaranteed. Holy Scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. With the mobilization of our collective energies and prayers, I am confident that we will move this nation to where she has to be, a Ghana beyond aid, a modern, self-reliant nation capable of generating prosperity for the mass of her people and governed according to the rule of law and respect for human rights and the principles of democratic accountability. On behalf of my wife, Rebecca, my family and members of government, I wish you all a happy Easter. May the celebration of the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ give birth to a new season of faith, hope, growth and prosperity for us all. May God bless each one of us and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong.